Hi guys, in this video I will show you how I created grass, leaf and stone texture, as well as how to create atlas texture for the grass and leaf using Substance Designer. I will start with the grass, as it is the simplest texture from this project to make. The shape itself comes from the shape node. Stem, for example, is a square shape that was lowered in the width, and I made it longer in the y-axis. And make sure to turn off the tiling. After that, I used a trapezoid transform node to taper the top part of the stem. To create horizontal lines, I did pretty much the same. Shape node with a square shape and change its length and rotate it 90 degrees, as well as change the offset to move it higher. And finally, blend it to horizontal lines using blend node and add blending mode option. Then I warped them using purling noise as an intensity input and play around with the intensity and warp angle. Switch grayscale is used to enable disable horizontal lines. I've exposed this parameter if I need to enable or disable them. Another blend with a add blending mode to add stem and horizontal lines. A directional warp to make the whole stem bend in a certain direction with the help of the linear gradient node. To create color, a gradient map was used with these colors. I also experimented with creating a subsurface mask. However, I'm not really sure if it's worked as I expected or not. I will do more experiments in the future. To create it, I blended grayscale gradient with the whole stem to make the bottom part darker than the top part. The blending mode was set to multiply. I also created an output node called subsurface amount, which will be used in the speed tree, and I specified usage for scattering. To create the main leaf shape, Two shapes node was used. I have added a transform 2D node for the circle shape to stretch it a little and make it look like a novel. The square shape was moved down a little bit with the transform 2D node. Next is blending both shapes with a subtract blending mode, where the square shape will cut the oval shape at the bottom. Then another transform 2D to center it out. I moved it approximately to the center. Next are two cutter shapes, circle and triangles. The triangle is made with a shape and trapezoid node, rotated 180 and plugged into the splatter node to scatter the shape in the circle. Make sure to change the pattern type to image input and play around with the settings as you can see on the screen. I have rotated the ring where shapes will appear using ring rotation to make sure that the cutter appear mostly at the top of the leaf and play around with the other parameters and also expose them to use in Unreal Engine. The exact same process was done with the circle shape. Also, one thing to note about randomized parameter. This parameter is used to randomly remove cutters, as you can see now. Then, those cutters were blended with the main shape with a subtract blending mode and blended once again but multiplied this time to combine both cuts to the main shape. For the normal map, I added additional details with the crystals to noise, inverted it, which was optional, and play around with the levels node to get more highlights in the peaks. Then blurred it a little bit and blended it with the main shape with the default copy blending mode. The final touch was a histogram node to normalize grayscale values. In the normal node itself, you can play around with the intensity to get something you are after. The subsurface mask was done with the gradient node, which was blended with the original shape to make the bottom part darker and the top part lighter, where the most light will be scattered. The base color was a simple gradient node with a green color. To get an edge highlight color, I used the edge detect node and broke its shape with a purling noise using blending node with a subtract mode. Added a gradient node with a black to green gradient and blended again with the base color using add blending mode. 
Then, to color the main way, I created a rectangle shape, squashed it, tapered top part, and added a gradient map to convert the grayscale to color. Otherwise, I won't be able to blend it with the base color, as grayscale and color data can be blended together. To create side veins, I again used a shape node, moved it to the side, and created stripes node, which will be veins itself in this case. Make sure that the shift parameter is set to zero. Lower the width, add another directional warp to shift veins, then another directional warp to warp them based on the gradient direction. White values are where the most bend will happen. To create this gradient itself, I blended a vertical gradient with a gradient linear node to get the smooth fade at the top. Dark values on the gradient will remove color in the blend. The blend mode was set to multiply. Then invert grayscale, add a gradient map to convert grayscale data to color data for the blend. The blend mode was set to linear at when blending. Make sure to use original shape grayscale as the opacity mask to cut off unwanted parts. To color both veins at the same time, I combine them and use again original shape as the opacity mask. Convert it to grayscale and then back to the color with the gradient map and blended with the previous blend where veins were added, but this time used veins as the opacity mask instead of the whole original shape. To add white and black dots, you can use the grunge spots node, which is blended with a purely noise, with a blend mode set to subtract to remove certain parts of the dots. Then blur dots a little bit and convert them back to color using gradient node. For the black dots, I did the same thing, except I inverted grayscale so only black spots will appear and blended with the multiply mode instead of an add. The blend was done with an original shape as an opacity mask with a multiply mode as well. To add slight color variation, I again use a purely noise and a gradient map. Not sure what to tell you here, you just need to play around with the colors to get something you're looking for. And here are the output nodes. To create Atlas, create a new graph and drag and drop your graph. In my case, it's the one I have just shown. Then add the material node and disable all unwanted outputs. I used specular levels as a subsurface amount output as there is no subsurface output by default. And if you know, please let me know how to do it properly. Make sure that the tiling mode is set to no tiling. When the material node is selected, you can move the texture in. 2D view. Duplicate nodes to create additional grass variation for the atlas. Then add the material blend node to blend two textures. To make sure that two textures will be in the output, textures need to be masked. This can be done with the grayscale mask. I have used roughness output from the material transform node, added a uniform color along with the blend node, and set blending mode to divide. Then inverted grayscale, and that's it. This technique I have learned from the Javier Perez. Then I repeated the same process three more times to create five variations in total. For the stone texture, I blended purling and grunge noises and used histogram scan to kind of normalize grayscale input to use the full range of grayscale values, then inverted it and used a dot node which will be referenced later. This is mainly for organization purpose to remove spaghetti nodes, then blend this grunge with cracks using multiply mode. To create warped lines, the shape node was used along with the purling noise, which is used as an intensity in the direction warp, which then plugged into the two tile generators. One for the main lines and the second for the small lines. Make sure to change the pattern type to input image. Position offset to randomize horizontal position and global offset was used to place main lines more towards the top. The thing I did differently here for the smaller lines is I changed the width parameter to 2 under the output size. This gave me a smaller line size. Other settings was the same as in the main lines tile generator. Then blended two line shapes with a add blending mode, normalized grayscale, blurred, inverted, and blended with cracks and grunge noise.
to color lines with cracks, I used a dot node to reference cracks on line masks. Then I did a histogram scan to select the parts I want to appear and then a gradient map while using cracks noise as the opacity mask for the blend. For the grunge, I converted the whole height information into the normal map and then into curvature normal to get more details. Blurred it and added color with the gradient map. To use cracks and lines as the opacity mask, blend output needs to be converted to a grayscale. Then again, purely noise with a gradient node to create color variation on the whole texture, blended it while using cracks and lines colors as the opacity mask. And to create white and black dots, grunge spot noise with a blur HQ node and then invert it. After that add a gradient map and blend separately white and black dots with a copy blending mode. For the blend mask I used an inverted mask from white and black spots. Finally I have added a HSL node to add slight saturation. For roughness I combined all of the masks, inverted them and play with the levels node to get the look I want. For the normal, I just blurred it a little bit and that's pretty much it. Now let me quickly show you how it looks like inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, but first of all, to export this substance graph, right click on the substance graph and click publish and choose the file path you want and click save. And then you can import it directly inside of Unreal Engine. Just make sure that you have installed Substance plugin beforehand. On import, you can choose the template import option, which will create certain material types like Triplanar, Default, or some other option. And after that, you have a full access to your Substance Graph, to your exposed parameters from your Substance Graph, and those settings can be changed almost in real time, which is super awesome. Well, that's about it. If you found it valuable, give a like, subscribe or share with a friend. Substance source files are available at my Patreon. See you in the next video. Take care. Have a lot of joy.